Metroid Prime Remastered is one of the best remasters I have seen since Halo 2 Anniversary, but you probably know that by now. I will briefly talk about it, but I mostly want to focus on Metroid Prime as a game. It has been 21 years since it launched in 2002. How has it aged? What is it like playing Metroid Prime in 2023? Hey, Derek here. Now, I played Metroid Prime on launch, yet for whatever reason, I didn't retain that knowledge. I remember some tunes, I remember some locations, like the opening of Talon with the waterfall in front of you and Samus' spaceship behind you. I remember Ridley, yet even Ridley I didn't remember correctly. I remember normal Ridley, not meta Ridley. Perhaps I was too busy playing Time Splitters 2, Halo, Half-Life at that time, the information I gained from Metroid Prime just kind of went right out of my head. All of this is a good thing, it effectively means I get to play through Metroid Prime as a first time playthrough and see how it holds up under 2023's scrutiny. But before I do that, allow me to gush about this remaster. It looks really good. Remember how I mentioned Halo 2 Anniversary in the intro? Well this game effectively does the same thing. It takes the source code from the Wii version of Metroid Prime and updates it with new lighting, new geometry, new controls, and brings it into the current day. This also means it's a true remaster. Geometry is the same, animations are the same, enemies are the same. This is a very faithful remaster. It kept all that awesome attention to detail that the original Metroid Prime had. The HUD is still Samus's visor. You still see Samus's face when explosions go off nearby. Rain still bounces off your blaster. These are minor touches, yes, but they really do add to the immersion of Metroid Prime. They're one of the things that I did remember. And the music itself is very interesting. It's simplistic. The result is not something so in your face like Doom. Instead, it feels more like ambience in the background. For example, crickets chirping in Half-Life 2's Root Canal. These simple tunes are just enough to get into your head and really add towards the feeling of exploring an alien planet. On the more technical side, I never had the frame rate drop below 60 FPS, which for the Switch is very impressive with how this game looks. One of the things they did change was the controls. That is another thing I vividly remember when I played Metroid Prime back in the day. I remember the controls being awful even back then. They're solidly tank controls. I was already well acquainted to dual stick aiming. I mean, Halo came out before Metroid Prime did. That was quickly becoming the standard. Doing everything with one analog stick was just odd. This remaster's default controls are twin stick controls, yet it still retains the lock-on combat that we saw in the original Metroid Prime. In my eyes, this is the best of both worlds. It has other aiming options as well. If you like gyro aiming, this is effectively the same as the dual stick controls, but now you have gyro aiming. It does allow you to go back to the old control scheme if you really want those tank controls back, or it allows you to do a combination of both, which is kind of the tank controls with gyro aiming. This is the only real significant thing they changed from the original game, and in my opinion, it's a good change. So, yeah. If you clicked on this video and the only thing you wanted to know was, is the remaster good? Here's your answer, it's very good, one of the best remasters I've ever seen. But before I go on with Metroid Prime as a game, I need to thank today's sponsor, Into the AM. I accept Into the AM sponsors a lot because they're so nice to work with. Virtually every sponsor is going to give me a list of things to talk about and it's very rare that I don't get that. Into the AM instead just goes, hey if you see something on our website and you want it, just tell us and we'll send it to you and then we'll pay you and 
There you go, you're sponsored now. I have asked for a lot of stuff off their website because I really do like this stuff. I mean, I wear this everywhere. I talk about it in all of these sponsors. They're flexible and durable enough for me to go mountain biking or hiking in them. They look good enough for me to just hang out with my friends anywhere I'm going. And they're very soft and comfortable, so I just wear them around the house. I'm at a point where I really don't wear much else. And if you don't want just shirts, they have a lot of other things like hats and hoodies and pants and, you know, they're a clothing brand. They also have the normal deals you would expect, three basic tees for 45 or three graphic tees for 60. And if you go to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, you get 10% off site wide and this stacks on top of the deals. So huge thanks to Into the Am for sponsoring this video. And now let's go back to Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime has a simple non-direct story. I can't remember a single word spoken aside from whenever you scanned something. This is full on atmospheric storytelling. Scanning everything with your visor is huge, but optional. Depending on what you scan, you may get logs from pirates talking about Samus being a threat. You may get other logs from pirates talking about how they're mutating parasites and even other pirates. If you scan ancient Chozo ruins, you'll get informed of an asteroid that landed, spreading toxins through their water, and the ensuing fight to stop the decay. The story is not ham-fisted to you. You don't get cutscenes on top of cutscenes or interrupted gameplay. It rewards the player for exploring, and it makes the world feel more lively and believable. Also, it's optional. I imagine kids of the time had no interest and reading a bunch of text, they just wanted to play the game. So if you don't want to read it, you don't have to. As for the gameplay, well, it's a Metroidvania. I'm not really too interested in exploring how the entire concept works because you most likely already know exactly how it works. You unlock new areas by finding new upgrades, and it is still immensely satisfying to constantly walk by an area you can't access just to finally get that new upgrade and immediately know where you can use it. <laughs> It's important to remember that this was the first 3D Metroid game and they nailed the transition to the extra dimension. Games at the time were constantly trying to go 3D and failing over and over and over again. Yet here comes Metroid and they nail it first try. As for combat, well, combat is not really this game's focus. The combat that exists is not execution heavy, instead it's more like a puzzle. Once you understand how to defeat an enemy, that's pretty much it. It's very easy, but that's not really a bad thing, as this game wants you to focus on exploration first and foremost. Being a difficult challenge isn't really one of its goals. Now, we all know how good Metroid Prime is, but I do have some complaints. Don't take this as me slandering the game and hating it, just, you know, I'm gonna say something bad about your favorite childhood game. Be prepared. Some of these complaints are very tired, but I'm gonna go over them anyway. Backtracking. My gosh, there is so much backtracking in this game. Movement is not particularly fast, and especially towards the end of the game, you're going to be going through the same zones over and over and over. In my opinion, there really needs to be some sort of fast travel system. Either just a fast travel point, one or two in each zone, or just turn the save points into fast travel zones, and don't allow people to fast travel when you're stuck in a more linear section of the game. This adds so much more time to the game, and it's not really needed. Metroid Prime is already a long game. This extra traveling just makes it very tedious. You will eventually just start running by enemies ignoring them so you can get to where you need to go. At the end of this game, you even find yourself running by these freaking Metroids. Oh my lord, do I hate these fusion Metroids. Or are they fission Metroids? I don't remember. I don't care. I hate them. These Metroids will split when you shoot them and they constantly respawn. And they really only spawn in areas that have platforming. Ignoring them is an option, but when they latch onto you, you're probably going to fall all the way back down and do that platforming all over again. Screw these freaking things. Yes, you are able to kill them instantly with a power bomb when you're in Morph Ball, but god, they're annoying. And you might run by more of them towards the end of the game because towards the end of the game, you need to collect all these artifacts. This is a big complaint that constantly constantly pops up with the original Metroid Prime. Finding these artifacts can feel obtuse at times and not really necessary. How am I supposed to know there's an artifact hidden in this stone pillar? I have no reason to use any of my visors in here. You're just supposed to figure that out and find it. Yeah, these are kind of the worst elements of a Metroidvania, when you need to find that one little tiny thing that's not really properly told to you. Every Metroid has that moment, and well, there's a few of them here. I have no idea how I found these when I was younger. YouTube didn't exist yet, this is just 2002, and a lot of the world was still on dial-up. I know I found all the artifacts, because I fought Ridley, I remember that much. And speaking of Ridley, this is one of my more minor complaints, but some of the bosses just take forever. They're not really difficult, they just tend to be the same thing repeated over and over and over again until they eventually die. You get the initial puzzle, you figure out that initial puzzle, and then you spend the next 15-20 minutes 
waiting till it dies. The final boss is the biggest offender of this, I won't show it for spoiler reasons. With that said, this is really only a problem late game, and with only a few of the bosses. Most of these bosses are awesome, and I have no complaints about them. So consider that a bit of a nitpick towards the end. In conclusion, playing Metroid Prime takes me back to a different time. A time when AAA games meant something good. A time when AAA meant someone's vision had a real direction and a real budget behind it. A time when you got a fully finished, extremely polished game on launch. A time when Nintendo wasn't constantly sending cease and desist orders to every fan project that remotely looked in the direction of one of their IPs. A time when they weren't trying to stop the competitive Smash scene just from existing. A time before they tried to kill Project M and forced it underground. A time before they re-released old games for full price just to announce Metroid Prime Remastered, drop it on the same day, and only for $40. I really don't understand Nintendo. As a developer, they seem awesome. They release really good games. As a publisher, they show time and time again they're completely out of touch. And Metroid Prime is still one of the best games ever made, even in 2023. Huge thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. If you want to get some of this stuff for yourself, go to intotheam.com slash dragonshirts. And a huge thanks to all you guys for watching this video. If you want to follow my Twitch, there's a link in the bottom right. People that subscribe on Twitch get to see my videos ahead of time. My Twitter handle is down there in the bottom left if you care. And I will see you next video.